You can see the screen, just yeah. so you know. You can see you're not getting blocking the, the view of my fat. No, no. <laughs> Grab the love handle, that's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> Soon. Soon. Oh, so you don't grab one there? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you want that one? Not really. That's the one I've been sweating about. I'm oh, sorry, was I, was I flexing then? No. So I'm about to start an all out five minute effort up Gindia Drive, then I'm going to have a 10 minute recovery, and I'm going to do a 20 minute effort up Gindia Drive and continue on. And in the past, when I've done these tests, I've said things like So I'm about to start an hour of flogging, and I've got to tell you. I'd rather stick my dick in a blender. But in 2023, my friends, I'm gonna be doing more gratitude practice. For example, this morning, I am very grateful for the fact that I get to use both my legs, fully functional, and also push my heart as far as I can take it. So, let's get into it. <sighs> Five down, 20 to go. Trying to get some carbs in. Not sponsored, I bought this from the local supermarket for half price and it's actually really terrible. I don't recommend them. Always make sure you get down a lot of fluid when you have a gel. Can't remember the exact amount, but according to Steph Cronin, I'll put it somewhere on the screen. Oh, I'm still recovering from that effort. That's 20 dumb. It's a different type of hurt, that one. What's my biggest issue with my diet currently? Uh, at the moment, you're not fueling enough or eating enough at the beginning of the day. So what that is resulting in is when you get to that mid-afternoon time, um, you're fatigued, um, add in some work stress or life stress or just general day-to-day -day sort of activity, um, your body's craving you know, quick fuel and then you're looking for carbohydrates and, and you're eating more carbohydrates at the back end of the day and then that's also leading into a, a bigger dinner. So let's have a sneak peek at some of my dirty habits and we'll start off by when I pick my kids up from school, which is every other day. And what we'll do is typically go grab a treat and nine times out of 10, I'll grab a bag of veggie chips or even better yet, my favorite $10 special avocado oil chips and I'll smash the whole bag. If I'm not picking the kids up from school, normally around the 3 p.m. mark, I'll head into the kitchen and unleash on crackers, hummus, avocado, dark chocolate, and so forth. At dinner, or whenever there is a platter in front of me, such as at mum and dad's every Sunday lunch, I will fill my plate up twice, sometimes three times. In the evenings, I love a cold beer. Normally a strong one too, IPA 6% plus. That sorts you out. And since moving here to the Sunshine Coast about four years ago now, because of the heat, I've got into a bad habit of having one most evening, sometimes sitting there watching the laundry dry, which works out to be about five to seven beers per week. And a few nights per week, I'll grab a tub of coconut ice cream and I'll sit there with Ruby watching Degrassi Next Generation and I'll smash half of that thing. So back to Steph. So what I'm gonna try and do is fuel you more in the morning. Uh, one, that's gonna support your uh, performance on the bike, but it's also gonna support your um, energy levels over the day and then your hunger and appetite over the day so that by mid-afternoon and by dinner time, um, you're gonna have enough fuel there, but enough food there, I should say, but not so much that it's then gonna lead into a surplus or an energy surplus. <laughs> You've got a really good starting base. Um, so there's definitely room for, for movement um, and you'll find you'll likely lose most of your body fat from your abdominal area. Okay. Um, but you've got a really good starting base. Uh, so kilogram wise, it's hard to say based on how much lean muscle um, you either maintain or build. I would say from a body fat perspective, you've got anywhere from three to five kilos worth of body fat. Um, I'm thinking that you're probably gonna lose around seven millimeters worth of skin folds to equate to roughly about that sort of three to five kilos. And because you're quite low in your skin folds, again, as an estimation, about two and a half mils um, is, is gonna give you a, a kilo worth of subcutaneous body fat, and then you're gonna lose some visceral body fat at the same time. That might be equivalent to three kilos on the scales. Um, however, that might actually be less if you're gonna build some muscle at the same time, and that's gonna be based on your training program and obviously the amount of lean muscle that your body's capable of, of building. So I reckon it's been almost two years since I've done a vlog series on this channel where I'm kind of bringing you along on a journey. And I apologize, it's been that long though because I've been flogging myself in front of that thing over there, which is unfortunately a computer screen, trying to get a business off the ground being the Road Cycling Academy. But the good news is 
over the past couple of years, I've been able to hire some really good people, people that I trust, and it's taken a lot of weight off my shoulders, meaning I can run more series like this on the channel, I can give myself some time back, and I kind of feel these are the best videos, best series to follow, where somebody's being open, vulnerable, and I can bring you along on the journey, and we can all learn as we go through the process. So in my opinion, my biggest weakness as a cyclist is efficiency. And I'm conscious you can break efficiency into multiple compartments. You've got sitting on the bike, aerodynamics, you've got bike handling skills, efficiency in a bunch. And we will delve into those as we go through this series, which I'm forecasting to be about 12 to 16 weeks in length. But for me, the low hanging fruit particularly from a data perspective, something that we can sort of measure at the start and at the end of the series is power to weight. Now quickly, for those of you who might be unaware, power to weight is simply the amount of power you can generate while pedaling in wattage, and I get my wattage reading from my power meter pedals, divided by your body weight in kilograms. So we can actually get a power to weight ratio four different segments, which we'll discuss now. Now, at the start of this video, you saw me doing an all-out five-minute effort and then a 20-minute all-out effort. And the day prior to that, I also did three all-out five-second sprints and one minute as hard as I could go. In other words, I now have a good idea on my current neuromuscular all-out sprint power, my anaerobic power, my VO2 max power, and my threshold power. And I also weighed myself at Steph's during the day and at home the next morning, less the foam weight of 200 grams, I'm about 78.4 kilograms, which did surprise me because typically with this amount of weight, in the past I've been closer to 80 kilograms, and I haven't really been weighing myself a lot in the last couple of years, so I feel probably over the last couple of years I've lost further muscle mass, notably in my upper body, where I have legacy weight from going to the gym for a number of years. Now, in my training software, today's plan, I also have all my history or all my history from when I started training with power in 2013, which includes a couple of years when I was racing with an amateur team in form racing. So there's a lot of data there for us to be able to reflect on. And ultimately, what I wanna do in this series at the age of 41 now, turning 42 in July, is to beat my all-time power to weight numbers for, you guessed it, five second, one minute, five minute, and 20 minute. In other words, I wanna get fitter than I've ever been before on the bike this year. And look, I really don't want this to come across like a show-off thing or anything like that. I am fully aware as a recreational and amateur road cyclist, which is what I am, I am middle of the pack. And in terms of efficiency on the bike, I have a lot of work to do. This is really for me about self-improvement and I'm hopeful for some of you out there, a good learning opportunity as I bring subject matter experts into the fold, such as Steph Cronin, the sports dietitian, Neil Stanbury for another bike fit with me, Aaron Turner, a cycling specific strength and conditioning coach, and my cycling coach, Ryan Thomas. That's right, while I technically am a cycling coach myself, I wanna have that accountability. And I also truly believe Ryan is a much better coach than myself. And I'm gonna learn a lot through the process. So, the data. What we have in front of us here, which I'll provide a link to below, it's the official power to weight spreadsheet from Hunter Allen, the co-author of the famous book, Training and Racing with a Power Meter. Hunter and his team have analyzed thousands of athletes' data over the years, and myself and you two can see where you sit relative to novice right through to world championship level from a power to weight perspective across, as you might have guessed, five second, one minute, five minute, and 20 minute. Meaning, in addition to see where I rank against my previous personal best power to weight numbers in this series, I can also see where I'm sitting relative to the general population. Now, my numbers from the past. Not surprisingly, two are from when I was racing with Inform in 2014, and one from 2016. Just quickly relating to that data as well, regarding the FT number. 
I did ask Hunter overnight and he came back to me. Thank you very much, Hunter. Just trying to understand whether they'd extracted that data as people's best 20 minute and taken 95% of that to get functional threshold power, a rough average for your hour power, which a lot of people do. Or was it the fatiguing five minute protocol first, like what I did, then the all out 20 minute and then taking 95% of that or was it people's full hour? And surprisingly, it was people's full hour or thereabouts, whether it was 55 minutes, 58 minutes, as long as it's around about an hour. But he did stress, if you want to replicate that as best as you can without doing the full hour, because it is impractical that you must do the five minute all out fatiguing protocol first, then doing 20 minutes and taking 95% of that. My personal opinion, I agree if you're conditioned, but if you've never done a sustained effort before, if you've never done an FTP test before like a lot of RCA members haven't done, we advise initially to get some rough functional threshold numbers is to do the half Monty ramping protocol on Wahoo system. So where am I now? The testing that I've just completed. What were the numbers? I hear some of you asking, well, we're gonna save that for the next episode because I wanna dig it to some of the data and show you what I've been doing training wise in the last say three to six months versus where we're gonna be taking things into the future. Now during this series, I'm gonna be having a lot of discussions as mentioned with subject matter experts and I'm gonna be cutting those conversations down for YouTube content. But for those of you who want the full discussions and additionally my weekly coaching hookups analysis with Coach Ryan, then I'll be sending out this additional content every Friday starting next Friday over email, you can join that list below. Now, just know, Craig Wiggins, who's a continental rider for Pro Racing Sunshine Coast or ARA Skip Capital, who's managing the RCA YouTube channel, he will be running a similar series to me, but on the RCA channel. So make sure you check that out, which will be at more of an elite level than me. And ultimately, appreciate your support. If you're excited about this series, I certainly am. Please don't forget to drop a like below helps the channel out and the video, and I will see you in the next one.